Hi guys, Luca will be joining us today as he just fell asleep right here. But I would like to share this word with you from Mark 14 to 23. And I'm just going to focus on verses 20 to 23, but to get the whole context, you can read from verse 14. Jesus is speaking here and he's saying that whatever comes from the heart of man, that is what defiles and dishonors him. For from within, that is out of the heart of men, come base and malevolent thoughts and schemes, acts of sexual immorality, thefts, murders, adulteries, acts of greed and covetousness. Covetousness, it's the desiring um, some, someone else's possessions, uh, wickedness, deceit, unrestrained conduct, envy, jealousy, slander, profanity, that is uh, blasphemous or obscene language, um, arrogance, self-righteousness, and foolishness, which is poor judgment. And then he says, all these evil things come from within and defile and dishonor the man. Sure, it's hard words. But now you come to think and you ask yourself, well, if it comes out of the heart, how do we clean our hearts? <laughs> well, let's look at Proverbs 4. And in Proverbs 4, you might know this, this verse. Uh, Solomon is writing here and he's saying in verse 23, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the spring of life. Okay, now another question I immediately asked God when I was reading this is, okay, but if the springs of life come out of your heart, how do you fill it with the right things? Now, it needs to be filled, right? Because if there's something dirty in, you need to get it out and you need to give, be filled then with good. <laughs> so many of you might have seen this experiment where there's like dirty water in a cup and then they pour clean water. And if you keep on pouring the clean water, all the dirt comes out. And within a few moments, the whole cup has clean water. It asks of that filling with what is good, what is worthy. <laughs> right. So now we can look just three verses before verse 23 of Proverbs 4. It says in verse 20, My son, and this is Solomon speaking, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Sure, for they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. This is a great reward, right? For keeping the words and the sayings in your heart. Whose words and sayings? Well, I believe this is the Bible. This was Solomon speaking to his son, to his children. Now, Jesus is the word, John 1 says. So I believe this is the heart of Father God. And he's saying, if you keep my words, my sayings, that is in the Bible, in your heart, it will bring health to all your flesh. It will be healing. And then what also? Verse 23 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. You will have springs of life flowing from your heart. So, if it is not filled with God's words, God's truth, and it's filled with dirt, dirt will come out. Not springs of life, but springs of jealousy. Springs of arrogance, springs of murder, springs of adultery. And you know what's the reality of this? Everybody knows what's in your heart. You can't hide it. It flows from your heart. It comes out in your actions, in your words. You'll see, everybody knows usually what somebody is struggling with. They might not always say it because it flows. But if you're filled with God says his teachings, his words, his heart, springs of life flows from your heart. And everybody knows that too. Indeed, I believe everybody is nurtured by it. Everybody is refreshed by it when a person has these springs of water, springs of life of God flowing from your heart. Now, if we now know, okay, I'm struggling with this, Lord. 
So in that place, I have dirt in my heart. I do not have springs of life. What do we do about it? Yes, number one, we fill ourselves constantly with God's heart, with God's words to get it out because we replace the lies with the truth. That's very important, I believe. But now let's look at Proverbs 3 and in verse 34 it says, Though God he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his grace, his undeserved favor to the humble, to those who give up self-importance. God gives us grace to overcome when we are humble. But now we have to remember, we have to have the humility to come before God and to say, Lord, I recognize that I'm struggling with this. I recognize that I wasn't right doing this. And even with people in the relationships we are in, maybe let's say you have an argument with a colleague and I don't believe it's from God to feel entitled the whole time saying and knowing and going afterwards and being like, I was right. I am entitled to feel this way. I am entitled to fight about this. Yes, there is a place where we need to say what we are feeling. We need to voice maybe what's wrong as God leads us to with certain situations. But there's always a place of being open and saying, God, speak to me. Show me what you are seeing, what I do not see yet. Open my eyes. Help me to see where I have wronged the other person where I've been feeling the whole time that I am right. Show me what their perspective are, because then only we can come to a place where we see from every angle and we can actually move forward in a godly manner. So now I want to go to James 4 verse 6, because here it says, but he, God, gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin. Once again, first of all, what do we need? Humility, coming to God, saying, Lord, I recognize I could have been wrong, or I was wrong, or I sinned, or I took offense. Whatever the situation is, help me. God gives us then grace. In Proverbs 3, verse, um, was it now, 34, it speaks of the grace, which is the undeserved favor, unmerited favor. That's the first meaning of grace but there's also another meaning of grace and that is the enabling power to overcome and this is where it says um, he gives us more and more grace through the power of the holy spirit and i believe this is the enabling power to do what to defy sin to do it better next time to overcome that which we are struggling with because god calls us to be overcomers he calls us to walk in this journey where we are becoming more like Christ, where we are laying down things that are not seen in the life of Christ. Even though we feel entitled, even though the world says it's okay, stand up for your rights. If we do not see it in the life of Jesus and the word, how can we say that is right? We are Christians. We are followers of Jesus and we live according to one standard, and that's the word of God. So here it says, yes, he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. An obedient life. I believe when we do this, we say, Lord, I see the dirt in my heart. I come humbly to you. And I ask you to help me. God gives us then grace to overcome, to deal with that sin, to get victory in that place. Why? Because Jesus has overcome and we walk in his footsteps. We walk in his inheritance, in his blessing. Through him we have all spiritual blessings to overcome. But it's a journey for each one of us. It's a place of conquering, trial for trial for trial, overcoming, building character, this is just the way God works. And I believe that when we do that, we are walking in obedience, when we clear up the dirt out of our hearts. But now there's also another part to this. Let's quickly go to James 5, verse 16 and 17. First of all, 
in certain places and we'll have to be very sensitive to what Holy Spirit is saying. So it needs to be a place of meeting with God and speaking to him about these things where we humbly we come before God and we deal with the things that we see is wrong in our lives. But sometimes we need to go to certain people. We need the help of our fellow believers or people we have wronged. We need to go to them and we need to say, I'm sorry, I've been wrong. Pray for me. James says in, in James 5 verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. This is now the second time that healing, restoration, is spoken of when you do the right thing. <laughs> do you remember in the beginning when you keep the word and the sayings and the teachings in your heart healing is a reward healing is a consequence a result well here it says pray for one another when you have confessed your sins and you may be so that you may be healed and restored also something to ponder on right so i believe there's a place where when we have wronged someone and we have to know that we are very blessed when we have people in our lives fellow believers where we can go to them and we can say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I was impatient or maybe that I got angry. I'm sorry that I was jealous or whatever it might be. But I'm struggling with that. And that takes a lot of humility. That is bringing the darkness to the light. That is taking away the foothold, the enemy, Satan. The accuser has on you because now if you bring that darkness to the light what happens he can't accuse you anymore it's in the light it's open so coming to somebody saying struggling with this and then praying for you it's so powerful it's really powerful why because the very next verse and I don't think it's a coincidence that it's the very next verse says this the heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. I believe there's two points to this. First of all, coming, saying what's wrong, what you're struggling with, bringing the darkness to the light in front of that person and then praying for you. I believe that prayer has tremendous power to help you to overcome because God wants us to support each other. But also the second part to this, I believe, is when we bring our darkness to the light, we ask forgiveness, whether it's like the previous verse, going to God, saying, Lord, I'm struggling with this, give me grace to overcome, or coming to that person, somebody, it, should, it doesn't even have to be the person maybe you've wronged, really listen to God's voice in that and then praying for you what happens when we bring that darkness to the light we are restored we are realigned again with God's will and with his voice and in that we are standing again in the righteousness of Christ and the prayer of a righteous believer can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God it's dynamic and can have tremendous power. This begs the question. When we are in right standing with God, we have learned our lesson. We have done the right thing. We have been obedient. Our prayers have more power. Is this what it says? I believe so. Because I believe it's more important for God, for our Father, to have us wait for the answered prayer and to transform into the likeness of Christ than it is for him just to give us answered prayers. It's more important for him to have us aligned and in right standing with him than it is to just give us the answer the answered prayer. Both very important. But God wants us to grow, to grow into the likeness of Christ. May you have a very blessed day.